much. Did you hear that? My name is Adrian Sim, I'm the Alliance for Water Stewardship. And my remark is for Jane in particular, because what you were describing about water and its relationship uh, to uh, resilience and climate change was obviously speaking very much to, to our priorities. And um, I, I guess I, I, I'm coming at this from a very similar position to you, Jane, but uh, we have a, a standard system that engages water and users in, in the sustainable management of water resources. Um, and I guess I, I'm frustrated by the pace at which we can make progress. And uh, I'd like your thoughts on, on how organizations like ours can, can be more instrumental, pivotal in, in accelerating the, the pace of progress. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's have some responses. First question was policy and operation challenges afield. Should we start? Yeah, anyone? Yeah. Uh, um, yes, so I think this is an excellent question because uh, from, from our experience in Weapons International trying to bring about change at a landscape scale, um, our, our conclusion is you have to work at all levels sim simultaneously, basically. So, but I would want to emphasize um, the value of the bottom up policy influencing. So, the thing is, in order to do something on the significant scale in a country, generally, well, always you have to work with the, the national uh, and local government, and there may be some policy regulation shifts necessary from the beginning to allow something that is innovative to happen that cuts across sectors. So that's the first one. But then actually what we do is then um, set the program working in the field and then continually feed back what is policy relevant to the different scales in the government and, and thereby getting the change. Um, and then some, and then embedding the actual changes in the landscape um, into the planning system, even the really small changes. So, you, for example, a women's community group uh, carries out a project and changes the, the land use in a very small parcel. We make sure it gets captured in the planning system so that that is safeguarded for the future. This influences bottom up. Um, we have had some cases in South Asia where, where very small um, village groups clubbed together because they had similar concerns in the landscape to reduce the, the flood risks. In fact. And they were able then to influence the disaster risk management plans you know, at the district level and eventually the national level. And that influenced the World Bank financing to their delta. So it's incredibly powerful if you can get that bottom-up process working. Thank you. Alexander, your uh, Neil, one question about water management and communities and frustration our colleague shared. I think the question was about uh, yeah, how we could join forces and uh, what shape that might take and uh, well I I don't know, but I'd love to talk to you about it. <laughs> it sounds to me like uh, uh, maybe we could pick on a, a particular part of the world or key landscape and, and home in on how we could combine our different approaches, how we could make the water stewardship methodology more accessible, perhaps, um, to a wider range of stakeholders, how we can, in particular, I think, connect the ecosystem part better in to to the water metrics um, that would be very helpful but uh, well let's have a chat or a beer or something and uh, think about what we might do practically thank you Jane you know policy 